favorite podcast is to ditch and tits. I put up my tits to get down with this. My favorite podcast, two dits and tits. We fight and then we celebrate with tits. What's up? You're rolling with another episode of Jits and Tits. Damn! The Jits and Tits podcast is brought to you by Brandon Remy of Remy Fit, the premier online training outlet for combat sports athletes. Focusing on the four pillars of performance, movement, mindset, sleep, and nutrition. Check Brandon out at RemyFit.com and be Remy Fit on Instagram. We're also brought to you by our home base, Island Kava, Long Island's first and only kava bar, serving exotic teas and relaxing elixirs that will help you recover and wind down after an intense training session. Island Kava is located right in the heart of Patchog. We're also sponsored by Total Motion 360, a brand new at-home fitness product coming soon to the marketplace. This innovative fitness product combines functional training with traditional training, taking it to levels never seen before. Total Motion 360 takes concepts from landmine training and mixes in movements from yoga, Pilates, and Tai Chi, creating fun total body workouts to promote balance, strength, and form. Check them out on Facebook and Instagram at Total Motion 360. Visit their website, TotalMotion360.com. Jits and Tits Podcast is also brought to you by Lalo, a carbonated kava drink inspired by the culture of the south coast of the Fiji Islands, where locals have been cultivating and enjoying kava for generations. Their ingredients are sourced straight from the South Pacific, staying true to their island roots. Inspired by the island lifestyle, Lalo looks to counterbalance the caffeinated, work-hard, play-hard culture of our time. You can find Lalo at Island Kava, Long Island's major distributor of this relaxing and island-inspired drink. Yo, yo, yo. What's going on, boys? New mixer in the building. Dude, new mixer, new look. We got a special guest today, dude. Thanks for coming on, Eric Ott. Much appreciated. I appreciate you guys having me on. Yeah, it's dude. like uh, it's like old times right now, Eric. Ott. Very much so. Reminds me of the Six Borrow. That was probably the last time I've actually spoken to a, a microphone. So. It's been about two years. Two years, damn, yeah. dude. R.I.P. Six Borough. But now it's now it's the Jitty Titty Gang. Yo, the Jitty Titty Gang's holding it down right now, man. You got a lot of traction. Got yeah. some listeners out there, dude. We're finally getting some question of the days. Yeah. Yeah. I finally my After. relentless bitching at the end of the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> it's only like forty two episodes on yeah. that, but yeah, we got them. I'm yeah. excited for whatever uh for two things today because Eric's here. The question of the day, because I know Eric will have a hilarious answer and get your weight up, not your hate up, because I know Eric will have some good gripes. Yeah. Yeah. So Eric, I don't know if you know about the uh the segment we do get your weight up, not your hate up. It's mm-hmm. basically your pet peeve, something that pisses you off. So everything for me. <laughs> <laughs> I got, I actually got one. If we want to go, you want to go right into that? Well, we can save it. Let's save it. All right. Let's save yeah, it. Let's, um, Eric, I'm sure anybody that's going to end up listening to this probably knows, but just in case, tell everybody you're the, the Renaissance man that you are. I mean, first and foremost, one of the co-owners of Island Kava who lets us set up shop here and do our podcast here. So thank you for that. And uh, good. go ahead, tell everybody the, Ren- the Renaissance man you are. I am the proprietor of a small tea shop in Patchog Village. <laughs> <laughs> Where you serve a variety of teas from around elixirs. the world. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. I, I serve a variety of erotic elixirs from around the world. Yeah, you do. <laughs> you definitely do. I think I said erotic instead of exotic. Exotic elixirs. Some of them could be erotic, though. Yeah, I guess so. Some of them make you feel pretty good. Cacao's an aphrodisiac, apparently. Is yeah. it really? Yeah. I just felt like I drank a ton of coffee, but some people really like it. It's really? good, man. I actually like that oh, drink. I love it's the really way good. it tastes. Yeah, the cacao is mad good. Uh, I don't know if it got me horny or not. I, didn't, I definitely didn't get that from it, but no. I did feel like, oh, I got a little bit of like uh, pop in my step now. Yeah, yeah. 100%. I, I kind of got horny watching you drink it, though. So, Damn, yeah. dude. That, that cacao stash I had is like drinking a glass of milk, bro. Terrence, you good? Damn. I'm all right. Damn. Did you shit like, What is that? Like a uh, water. Ace Ventura, when he comes out of the bathroom, he's like, do not go in there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. At least he had an excuse. Yo, you got he was like fighting a dolphin or some shit. Like I didn't, that. Uh, Parents like that's took not his snowflake. shit and got everywhere. That's not use, snowflake. I didn't use a hand dryer. I was in a rush to get back to the you, podcast. You got, like, you got like water spots all over your pants. Like you're like, my, when my son was four years old and we we're teaching him to pee standing up for the first time. <laughs> Whose idea was it to get this fucking guy on, dude? I'm not so sure about this guy. Oh, that's great. So, Eric, uh, you're, uh, you're back doing uh, a little jiu-jitsu. A couple times that we talked, you're, you're getting back into it horror. Oh, yeah. Jumping back into jiu-jitsu. Sometimes you get a little bit older. You get a little banged up. You have some kids, and uh, you don't get to train as much as you would like. Yeah. But 
now I'm 38 and things are sort of evening out for me. And I've been trying to get into the gym at least like two days a week to do a little bit of nogi. Yeah, and you're doing it, mm -hmm. right? You're staying consistent with it? I have been. Oh, actually, up until about like a week and a half ago, that I tweaked my shoulder a little bit, but I'll be back again soon. Father time, bro. Yeah. Eric Ott. It's a cruel, he's a cruel mistress. <laughs> <laughs> in, in my opinion, you still have some unfinished business in the MMA world. I still think you need to... Uh, you, you need at least one more, in my opinion. I, I can agree with that. Whether or not that will happen has a lot to do with a, a variety of variables, but I would like to get another one or two tussles in. How many, how many fights did you have? Eight. Eight, damn. Eight that are on your record. There's a couple that are not, correct? Yeah, yeah but you can't count those. Right. Well, you're talking the streets? You were fucking uh, smokers. No, dude, you were slinging fucking leather? That shit counts. Yeah, like, no, back in the day, there were, like, events that they would have. Like, sometimes you just fight people from other people's gyms. Yeah. And, like, in my mind at the time, they weren't MMA fights because, like, an MMA fight in... 2003 or 2004 was like you're at least in like a high school gym not in like a, a regular training facility but like when you think back on it it's like oh well that, they brought guys from their gym that we didn't like and then we just like we fought them as if it was oh this is sparring but it wasn't like I mean they were like a referee and they would stop it when you that was it it yeah. wasn't like sparring sparring yeah 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 100% no, I like think every one of us smokers gym smokers yeah. you myself and Nick definitely have one or two fights that are not in a database because our fights predate online MMA databases. I know, it's I, crazy. I, I have fights that predate digital video. <laughs> no, I'm not joking. I have fights that predate digital video. I, When I first started fighting, you couldn't take a cell phone picture, not video, picture. Damn. With your phone. It was still like analog days. Yeah. I remember, I remember those gym smokers, man. Like, you would just meet up in a gym somewhere, like here in Patchogue, dude. They they had it upstairs at uh, what was it? Finest, Finest yeah. yeah. That was where I fought, and it was like basically like a boxing ring doing MMA, dude. It was like insane. And you would show up, and you'd get matched up that day with somebody. Yeah, it wasn't like you knew who you were fighting. They're like, you, you oh, could, you could you guys are about the same size. You too. Yeah. Yep. You can negotiate rule sets. <laughs> like, right, yeah. you want a headbutt? <laughs> yeah, we can have. We can allow it. Yeah. My partner here, Ryan LaFlair's first MMA fight, I was one of his corner men, and there were headbutts allowed in it. That's it was, insane. Yeah, that, was, he had the mohawk in that one, right? Yeah, yeah. mohawk, and uh, back when he had hair. <laughs> but um, I remember going to the event, and it was like literally like UFC 1 rules, like no eye gouging, no biting, no groin strikes. And I'm pretty sure those were the only rules. Damn. Yeah, that that's, how the, it was. Um, that's how it was when UFC first came out. That was the UCL, right? Yeah, Underground yeah. Combat League. Oh, shit. You remember that? That's old school. That was big. That Peter was like Storm. Yeah. That was before, that was like the real dark ages when MMA still wasn't legal in New York and several other states. I mean, New York was the last state to legalize MMA, mm -hmm. but I mean, we were fighting, even when they started getting like somewhat legit amateur MMA shows, you would fight and it was like sanctioned. And there was refs, and it was like you'd get an opponent ahead of time, but there was no, like, there's no blood work. You didn't have to do blood work. No. You didn't have to get a physical. You just showed up and fight. Yeah, like you said, there was no weigh-ins either, dude. Yeah. They just they just sized the two guys up and were like, yeah, you look close in weight. And sometimes you'd fight, like, people that weren't planning on fighting that day, but they would just showed up with, like, somebody else on their team, and they were in, like, good shape, and they, like, got a little fire under their ass, and like, yeah, I can get in there. Oh, oh you got that guy? Yeah, fuck that guy up. Yeah, that and the next thing you know, there's, like, there's fights on the card of guys that were just like, oh, it's Sunday, and I feel good. Yeah, That was so pretty sick. common, where, like, you'd show up to show uh, a show, and, like, if you were in the crowd, you might end up fighting because another fight fell out or something happens. Like, you could show up as a spectator and end up fighting. It was not uncommon back I, then. I, watch, I literally watched that happen. Um on a couple of occasions, but one of the unfortunate uh, instances, uh, an acquaintance of ours was fighting, and um, last minute we, we show up at the show, and I wasn't uh, on his team or training with him at this point, but he's a good friend now. He's in there, and his guy bails out, and then he's like, oh, but one of my teammates will fight for me, and that teammate that my friend had to fight was Frankie Edgar. <laughs> <laughs> like no joke yeah like could you imagine that like I saw, you're, you're, I saw that fight yeah like you're in there was headbutts in that one too and there were headbutts in that oh, one shit. too and uh and uh, it's fucking crazy like yeah. that that could possibly like happen back in yeah. those days and like that was the type of day where you would get an email at like 10 or 11 o'clock in the morning like a couple hours before the event started 
and they would tell you where to go <laughs> because they didn't want like the police to find out yeah. or the athletic commission. A true, a true fight club. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah with injuries, injuries are like a part of the game. What, what do you think your, your worst injury was fighting? Uh, um, I had two pretty bad ones. I broke my orbital, which I had like a, it's called a blowout fracture, where you have uh, I guess a four different skull fractures. Holy shit! And uh, it was basically my whole left side of my face. I ended up needing like four metal plates. I have four metal plates in it now and a sixteen screws. Damn. Yeah, but like. That just shows like what a gangster you are, Eric. That happened back in like 2008, and you took the time off and healed, and came back and had like six more fights after that. Yeah, that's sick. <laughs> Sometimes you have to do stuff for yourself, or you can't like. Yeah, I don't think I met you till after you got. Yeah, your face probably broken. most most people haven't. Like back then, MMA was such a small sport that there weren't a lot of guys training. Yeah. So there were there, most of the guys that are tra training now came in like after. MMA got more and more popular after the Ultimate Fighter show got yeah. popular. Yep. That's really what made Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and MMA like what it is today in the United States. I'm just going to say this. I think it's no secret that your MMA career got better after you got rid of the frosted blonde tips. Yeah. <laughs> well, that was also like it went out of style, and the longer you train, the better you get. So. <laughs> when, I, when I first started training, Eric was getting ready for his second fight, I believe, and I, I didn't know, I, I had no exposure to like the, the MMA world and culture of the gyms. And I was just like, I wanted to fight. So I came into the gym like, yeah, I want to be an MMA fighter. And they're like, yeah, cool story. This is Eric. He's a fighter. Have fun. Oh, no. And Eric and Ryan and Anthony D'Angelo beat me up. D'Angelo, uh, wow. Yeah, yeah. That was, my, that was my first sparring experience. And they beat me up. And uh, 15 years later, I'm actually still friends with Eric. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people I beat up I got friend, I make friends with afterwards yeah that's the best friends you make dude the ones that you fight yeah yeah me, me and Eric have been friends since then flew around America going to fights and shit oh yeah we had some good times yeah that was probably fun huh going to all these fights and you guys were doing the compu box right yeah yeah we were doing the PFL and Bellator and glory kickboxing and shit and um, more specifically the PFL they would uh fly us out to all the events so we had we had a couple good times and eric still holds one particular instance against me five years later <laughs> what's that go ahead eric oh the coffee incident <laughs> <laughs> coffee day uh oh let's hear, let's hear this coffee story oh, eric loves to tell this story so i'm always late i was late this morning <laughs> and uh <laughs> But I appreciate you starting off with that I'm admission. A, I'm, a, I'm putting that preface out there because I'm no saint when it comes to being late. Yeah, you got, you're on that Brazilian time, huh? Oh, man. No, I mean, not the Brazilian time because those guys just don't give a fuck. Yeah. You um, care? Uh, yeah, I do care. Be I do Allegedly. care. Allegedly. Allegedly? No, no, no. <laughs> I, I care very much. I just try to pack too many items into the day okay. like i have a big checklist of all the things that i need to do for the week yeah and i'm just like oh i can get one more in oh i can get more one one more in yeah so that's that's why i'm usually late very rarely it's because i'm like oh fuck these guys right. or like i'm not I'm, I'm 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 complacent or whatever yeah that makes me feel bad about this morning huh? <laughs> no this morning uh, you know about this morning i'm sorry i, no, I was up all last night with my sick daughter yeah, I'm just and the bus knee balls i blew through that alarm this morning without even like it was just like fucking going off and i had earplugs in too oh so uh, i just i fucking didn't hear it and good thing dave called because i felt my phone vibrating oh shit it was actually on me in damn, bed damn yeah all right so let's get back to this coffee story yeah bad. so the coffee story so i'm i'm a habitually late individual drives dave crazy but there's one thing that i'm not not late for and that's flights i don't miss flights i don't miss train i don't miss i don't miss things that involve other future travel we almost were when oh, we went to I'm chicago not, almost doesn't almost is not missed almost is not missed i got a lot of almost i'm the almost master i live at almost that is true though. i live at almost but so back to the story we're down in dc and we have to take amtrak back up here because taking amtrak is the fastest way to get to new york city because of traffic and flying takes longer driving takes longer so train it's the only place you'd actually travel by train to get there efficiently in the united states probably so we get down to the giant hub down in dc 
And I'm like, yo, we got to go. Our trains, our trains here. I know our trains here on the platform. And buying an Amtrak ticket is much different than, than going on the Long Island Railroad or uh, one of the other like regular municipal roads. You actually have a ticket to get on that specific train. Oh. And that's it. And it's almost like taking a plane where you go, you wait in a line, they let you onto the platform. Then there's like conductors that wave you onto your exact train. It's very, very, very efficient. Yeah, it sounds super organized. Yeah, it isn't like, oh, just stand up on the platform. Another train comes in like seven minutes after you could just jump on that one because DC's got trains going all over the country in every direction. Yeah. So. Dave, Dave's like, oh man, I gotta get my morning coffee. I know Dave at the time loved coffee. How many cups of coffee were you having a day back then? Oh man, at least three or four. That's a lie. It was probably <laughs> more like eight, or if they were three or four, they were oh, like. I was never up to eight. You know, these were like three or four 40 ounce big gulps. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you embellish something Damn. new with this story every no, time. I don't know. That's. It's Eric Oz pretty accurate on Damn. that one. Right, right, right. Yeah. I, he, you're, 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 to, you're down to like three or four cups now. Yes. No, dude. Yes. I, I'm down to like one. Yo, I, I quit s- caffeine for three months this year. <laughs> I saw you drink. One time I saw you drink like a 30 ounce coffee cup and then go to sleep right away. Oh, I can yeah. do that too. 100%. Oh, I can't do that. Oh, that's yeah. wild, man. We, if got, I- we got a cup of coffee on the ferry like a, from, from the harbor store. Cup of coffee. We get in a large cup. Get back here. He goes to toast and gets another one. This is all before. Yeah, like, how big are these before cups? Before we came here, <laughs> twenty ounce cups. He's like, I'm down to one half gallon cup. This was day. over the summer. <laughs> the one sixty four ounce glass. <laughs> and I didn't drink that one from the ferry because it was trash. That's why. No, you finished it. No, I didn't. Oh my god, I dumped there's, it. There's nothing wrong with loving caffeine. No, there's I love wrong. caffeine. But anyway, go yeah, ahead. All right. Finish. So Dave, Dave says he needs this coffee. I know that Dave is absolutely reliant on this coffee. <laughs> like Dave's about to go through caffeine withdrawals and start shaking have the chills <laughs> the cold sweats and i don't want to sit next to him on the train for two and a half three hours back up to new york city while dave's going through severe uh, opiate withdrawal caffeine withdrawals <laughs> <laughs> he gets all crotchety so i'm like all right dave you go get your coffee i'll try to hold the train so i'm um, i get up there i'm like waiting for him waiting for him waiting for him i'm not on the platform yet i'm in like the uh i don't know what you would call it but like the corridor like that you'd wait, walk through to get out to the platform. Yeah. And then, like, I hear the fucking guy yell, all aboard. Oh, he's like the conductor's out there <laughs> yelling. I hear the train going, toot, toot. There's nobody left in the corridor. There's nobody running. All the people that were running to make the train have already ran by me. I'm like, fuck, I got to get out there. So I run out there and I see the guy, and there's nobody on the platform. The conductor's out there, and he's like, oh, come on, you're coming to come. I'm like, I got one more guy. He's like, train's got to go. So I'm like, ah. <laughs> so I'm like fuck it, I'll wait with Dave. So I run back, and Dave's still online. At no, I wasn't still online. No, you weren't. Still I was online. walking back. You were walking back because you were calling me. I'm like, what's up? Yeah, I'm, I'm like, where is this guy? So Dave finally comes back. We end up missing the train. Oh. So I'm like, oh. but you know what? Dave needed his coffee. I didn't want him to be going through withdrawals for the next three hours. <laughs> Good friend, right there. So dude. I'm not. I'm like, whatever. I'm like, Dave. Now we got to switch the things. So they try. What, they, what? How much would it cost to switch the tickets? It's like sixty bucks. I think. Holy yeah, shit! So well, Dave, what's a t- what's a ticket anyway from like New York to DC? I think roughly. like a hundred, hundred and twenty bucks, give okay. or take, if I'm not mistaken. I I don't remember exactly what it was. It wasn't. No, I don't think it was. I think it was like eighty bucks. Eighty bucks. Yeah, it wasn't super expensive. So sixty to change it, so you just get like a twenty dollar credit. That sucks. Yeah, whatever. That does. We suck. didn't pay for it. Yeah. So you, got, you guys missed the train. Basically. So we so we missed the train, and I'm like, all right, whatever. It, the next train came in like an hour or an hour and a half later. It wasn't that bad. But I'm still like, now I don't want to hang out. Like, DC is fucking ghetto crackhead hood. Like, but now we got to hang out here and sit on the floor for a fucking hour. And a half. Yeah, oh, but we, like, it, we were in like the DC Grand Central. It was nice in there. It wasn't like we were waiting in like some shitty. It was all right. It wasn't hard. It wasn't Penn. No, yeah, I thought, dude, it was nice. Creatures. Listen, Penn's kind of shitty. Too. It was dude, better. Penn no, is real shitty. it was better than Penn. It was like Grand yeah, Central. It was better than Penn. Grand Central's fucking nice. The reason why I got the coffee, man, is because I saw this. Like, I'm like, yo, this coffee shop looks dope. They had like a nice coffee shop in there. <laughs> this some, is like, worth missing a train over. They had some exotic coffees. I'm like, let me check this shit out. Nice. How many <laughs> cups of coffee did he have? Well, so, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> no, I think that was his only one. Oh. But when we get on the train. We're, we finally get on the next train an hour and a half later. I pull out my phone and I'm like, I pop over my Instagram. I'm looking at the story and the first story is 
Dave getting coffee earlier that morning <laughs> <laughs> at another coffee shop. <laughs> <laughs> you motherfucker. I thought you were going to have withdrawals. I love that Eric I rem- remembers that story in your Instagram. He'll <laughs> never, he, he was, five years later, he still will not let this that go. Is I'm like, Dave, what the shit. fuck? You already had coffee? And then the first part is he led me to believe that he didn't so I wouldn't be angry at him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, well, honestly, I the oh, reason why that shit. happened is I misread the train times. I thought it was like it was in like 9.20. I thought our train was leaving at like 9.45. So I'm like, all right, I got a couple of minutes. Let me, yeah. go grab, let me just check out this coffee spot while I got some time. I didn't realize that we were taking the earlier train, but Eric was, he like didn't even talk to me the whole ride back oh, home. He was man. so mad. Was After pissed. I saw that you already had your fix that day, and this was just like an extra bonus fix that I had to wait around an hour and a half for. <laughs> Dude, in the honestly, movie. the coffee was good, man. It was worth it. I'm not a big like coffee guy. The only I only started drinking coffee at 35. Yeah, I didn't start until I was later either. I probably had my first cup. I had my first cup on the Sixth Borough podcast, actually, with yeah, Cup of Joe. Joe with Cup of Joe Coffee. It was no, the first time cup I ever had a cup yeah. of coffee. It's, it's, tea, it's tea's boy right there. Yeah, I, I didn't start drinking coffee till later into my 20s either. Yeah, I was 35. My wife, she like made a nice coffee. And she's like, oh, you want one? I'm like, no, I'm good. She's like, why not? I'm like, well, because I like ice cream. I like coffee ice cream. I don't like coffee. And she's like, well, if I could make it taste like coffee ice cream, would you have one? I'm like... I mean, yeah, I'll try it. So she made a iced coffee. It tasted just like coffee ice cream, and then that was it. Sold. I think I was I was with Dave. Actually, we went to roast, and he kept. He, I would always get like a green tea or something like that, and he kept getting his coffee. And we'd go like four times a day. Um, and I was like, you know what? Fuck it, I gotta try this. And I tried it once, and then that was it. You that loved was, it. Yeah, How old was, were you? It was probably what like. Five, six years ago, something like that. You guys all like started that. late. That's Some interesting. I started when I started working construction when I was like 23. Really? Yeah, I used to drink it like black coffee as a uh, pre-workout, but then it became like an everyday thing when I started uh, working construction. Damn. Hooked. Ben, I don't really drink much coffee anymore. No? I've just been ripping liquid IVs. It's just easier. <laughs> you too, you too I don't have those. to stop. I don't have to brew it. Like, I just throw it in water. And then the reason I started doing it is because I read that, like, you lose, like, a pound of water and you wake up dehydrated, like, after sleeping. Yeah. So I figured, like, when it's really hot out, like, I don't want to be cramping up when I'm running around. So I figure I'll just hydrate myself more. Well, they say the best. coffee dehydrates you, They too. say the best thing to drink in the morning is water. Before yeah. 12 yeah. Ounce glass of water, yeah. That's what I, Eric, do, Eric does that. We every, had a conversation like, yeah. in depth about that on New Year's, I think. Every single morning I wake up, I'll probably drink 20 to 30 ounces of water. And then I try to like move around a little bit. And I'm not like a morning exercise person per se, but I'll do like a couple squats, move my arms around a little bit and try to like get the water in to pull out any of the bad stuff yeah. before I take like my morning uh, piss. Nice. I, I, Arby, Arby Marcus is big. He does like a 12 ounce glass of water with mm-hmm. lemon juice. Yeah. And Himalayan salt. Yeah. That stuff pushes any of the junk out that's been like sitting stagnant. Yeah. And uh, it's good to get that blood circulation. You look at a lot of the Asian cultures, they do like their morning like exercise routine to get the blood flowing. Get, uh, they drink a lot of green tea stuff that purifies your, your system. If yeah, you, and they you, live forever. If yeah. you stay consistent with that, <clears throat> you wake up every morning just fucking rocked out. Really? No. <laughs> <laughs> but I heard I, like I'm gonna get on that. <laughs> no, what I read that was really interesting. Like if you're dehydrated and you drink water, the water will start hydrating you within five minutes. However, if you eat something before you start drinking the water, it'll be two hours before your body starts rehydrating itself. So something to think about. That is pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. I, I definitely heard the the best thing to do is first thing in the morning is chug water. Yeah, twenty yeah. minute you gotta have like ten, twenty minute gap between that and when you start eating. Like I don't even like taking vitamins. Yeah, like with that water in the morning, I just sort—I of, know that I feel the best when I just drink like two big glass, two sixteen-ounce glasses of water and move around a little bit. You put bit. anything in the water? Or just no. Usually, I don't. Sometimes I, put, <laughs> I'll tell you guys. Sometimes <laughs> I put a couple drops of BioSil in to thicken up the hair a little bit. <laughs> you know, but, it's going to be a good story but before Eric starts telling it when he starts to yeah, he gets excited. His legs. He gets excited. Yeah, I, get, like, I get oh, fired shit. up. I see that. I'm like, all right, buckle up. This I get all be good. fired it's gonna up. It's going to be a good one. I get fired up with some Jesus and get ready to tell some tales. <laughs> <laughs> so, how did um, how did Island Kava come about? Man, Kava makes you feel good. It does. I like things that make you feel good. Yeah. <laughs> Simple as that. Well, you have to get a little bit more into it. My partner Ryan uh, Lafleur is a UFC fighter, and 
when you get to the highest levels of the sport, you got to travel around a little bit to train with the best coaches. You got to get travel around a little bit to train with good teammates. And uh, he made it to the top 10 of the 170 pound weight class. And he started training at a gym down in Florida. At the time it was called the Black Zillions with uh, Henry Hooft. Now it's Sanford MMA. And down there, kava bars are a lot more prevalent than they are in other parts of the country. And he was sort of hanging out one night. And when you're getting ready for a fight, you can't drink any alcohol. It's like any endurance sport. If you're a cyclist, if you're a marathon runner, if you, I mean, if you're doing any sport and you want to perform at the peak level for, I don't know, eight to 10 weeks before your event, you shouldn't really drink alcohol because you're going to lose a little bit the next day. Even if you're not drunk, you're still going to lose a little bit due to the dehydration, yep. due to you uh, not being a hundred percent the night before. And with combat sports that uh, not being the next day, uh, not being 100% the next day could be real bad. Mm. So if you're if you're going, you're sparring nine in the morning, you had a couple of drinks the night before, you're a little bit slow. Someone might catch you with a kick or a punch that might not have got you. And then you might get injured or just, you need to be 100%. So nobody in fight camps really drinks eight to 10 weeks. And uh, for the eight to 10 weeks before the fight. So Ryan was down there training for one of his big fights with a whole bunch of the other guys that we watch on TV fight. And they were like, ah, oh, we're going to the Kava bar tonight. You got to come. And Ryan is like, what do you mean, Kava bar? We can't go to a bar. I got a fight coming up. They're like, nah, it's this tea that makes you feel real relaxed. So we went with them and was like, oh, this Kava tea is amazing. Like, I can't believe that we don't know what this stuff is in New York and these places are more prevalent here. So he gave me a call right away and he was like, yo, you got to check out these, these Kava bar places. So I went online, Googled one. There was one in Bushwick at the time and then another one in Lower Manhattan. And they were like real hole in the wall places. Yeah, I heard some of them could be real... Real, oh, real dark and grungy. Oh, Dingy. Yeah. They, they were like they were like I'm not going to call them skull holes, but they were <laughs> a little bit the one in Manhattan was a, a little bit nicer. They had their acts together, but the one in Brooklyn was not nice, but their product was great. Yeah. And I went I went there, I brought a bunch of friends to them, and everybody was all on the same page and we were like, "Oh, we got to do this." So Ryan was like, "Hey, when we're when we're done fighting, yo, let's do it." And, uh, and so that's what we did. Nice. Yeah, as soon as we were both done fighting, within like, literally like within like a month and a half, two months, I still remember the conversation. Um, my buddy was like, Ryan was like, hey, let's do a kava bar. We should do a kava bar. I want to do it. And I was at a, a fundraiser in Patchog. And we had said, like, if we do it, Patchogue would probably be a good spot. So I'm like, hey, I'm at this big fundraiser in Patchogue with all the notables. Let me, uh, let me ask around. There's a couple of real estate guys here. And, uh, and then that was that. Now we're in Patchogue. Literally that night, I talked to the president of the Chamber of Commerce and wow. uh, the realtor. And they were like, oh, we got a bunch of spots. And then now we're in one of those spots. That's sick. Literally a spot that was mentioned the first night. They were like, oh, the old, like... Uh, Sub Zero. Sub Zero ice cream spot just went out. So that would be a story you guys could get into. And then, oddly enough, here we're sitting there like three years later. Yep. Literally almost three years later to the day of that conversation was December 2018. Damn. Yep. That was the conversation. And then when did they end up, when did you end up opening up? Like that first conversation we, to. About a year and one month later. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's a quick. That's a quick turnover because you had to like. You had to find this place, and then you had to like fit it all out for like your needs and everything, like yeah. get approvals and permits. Yeah, and well, everything. the approvals and the permits took the longest. That's yeah. the most arduous task. Like, you have a good construction company or good contractors, you could really like take any blank space and get it ready for business in probably about two months, maybe three months, depending on how crazy you're going on the inside. But the uh, the uh, the red tape and the the bureaucracy of dealing with all like the municipal entities is what takes it's the most time and energy consuming yeah it sucks yeah and here in, in the village i feel like there's so many hoops that you have to jump through uh, a little bit but there's like a good and a bad too because like down here when you're in a village you they usually have their own building department mm. but because it's the village it's small and you could just call them up or like show up there and be like hey i don't know what to do is this the proper like wood to use or are these tiles okay and they'll just be like oh yeah those tiles are okay whereas if you're in a, a bigger uh township 
or municipal entity, you have to go take a number, then they'll have to get back to you. You might have to leave samples, and it turns it, it turns into a half day. Whereas down here, it's a ten minute it's a ten minute uh, ordeal. Oh, nice! But the difficult part about the village is is that everything's a little clicky too. Yeah. And we were the new guys in town. I didn't live here. Ryan didn't live here. We were just like some cowboys wanting to try a new concept. <laughs> and uh, they graciously let us in here. Yeah, so good. that's very cool. I'm glad they did because I love the spot, man. Yeah. Now you guys are pillars of the community. We feel ill. We, we feel real blessed that we, we were able to get in here and get open and that we've been well, at least what, what I think is like a positive addition to the community. Oh, for sure. Yeah, it's better than going to the bars and getting wasted, dude. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know? This is home base for so many people. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like. So many people. People that are just doing, like, work and stuff, like, on their laptops and everything. Like, it's a spot where you could come and, like, get work done. It's not super loud and, like, just, I don't know, just an alternative to just going to a loud-ass bar or coffee shop. Yeah, for sure. It's it's like, I don't know. I feel like you still get the, the benefits of going to the bar, though. You get that social aspect. You, you're sipping on something that makes you feel good. And I don't know. You it's, got, it's social, but without like the douchey aspect of the socialness at a bar. Yeah. There's nobody drunk being stupid. And it's not, there's not a DJ that's too loud where we can't have a conversation. There's music. Yep. There's, there's TV. There's the fights, whatever. But you could still hang out and maintain the conversation. Yeah. Yeah. It's not super loud. You have no one flexing on each other. It's funny when the drunk people stumble in here. And oh, they're dude. like, oh, no shot. Like, let me get a shot. And they're like... We don't have alcohol. No alcohol. You got weed. And so like, bro, let's get the fuck out of here. People, Wait. people do shots still. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. Bad last, idea. Last, yeah. last night they're twenty one. That's those are the people. That last still do last that. night that guy was wasted. Dude, oh from, my god. From next door. We were looking. At, we were looking at him, and he like makes eye contact with us and says. I'm gonna fuck people up. Yeah, and he goes to walk in here, and his his buddy yanked him back. But like, as he yanked him back, he had a hand on the door, so like the door came swinging open, and we're like, "Who the fuck is this guy?" Yeah, and then his like lady friend is like following him around Ocean Avenue, like get in the car. Everyone's what, like yelling. What kind of music? So so we're in the for everyone that doesn't know, we have like a small music venue next door that does live yes. shows and Dude. bands. Was it like an, usually they do like old man bands though, like 50s, 60s age range? Yeah, it was it was, it yeah, was, that it was like rock or something like that for so, sure. So he's trying to relive his glory days. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he's playing at the Metallica though. concert. Yeah. <laughs> Terrence walked out with a shell, gave it to him, and he was like, "Yo, this is awesome," and just calmed down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was like Bula. And he started to do a belly dance, right? His, his one, yeah, his belly dance would be nice from that guy. He's big, dude. They're they're a big draw. I don't know what bands they have, but like the parking lot is packed. Like there's people like hanging out in the back and yeah, the front. Dude, like every they, weekend, there's something of, going on. A ton of people. I hope they make some money because they really got shafted during COVID. So I hope they're able to make some money back. I'm I'm sure they're making it back, dude. They're doing really good right now. Yeah. But, but his buddy that was following him around, the drunk guy that wanted to fight everybody, his buddy like was walking back to 89 North and both of his elbows on his like shirt were ripped open. He must have been like wrestling with the guy around the corner. Oh, really? <laughs> Yo, it was so Yo could you imagine like how old were they? They were in their 50s? Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yo, and you're, if you're in your 50s and you and your friends are wrestling around in the municipal parking lot behind a strip of stores in Patchogue, yeah. like you got some questions to answer yeah. for me. Like how do you get there in life? <laughs> how are you still here, dude? Yeah. Like what was your 20s and 30s like? <laughs> yeah. and that's your 50s. <laughs> Probably the same. Like Probably what, the fucking what same. went wrong and where? Yeah. I think he said he was in the bar and like, I don't know, he had beef with somebody and he wanted to fight the guy and the guy wouldn't fight him so he got kicked out. So the guy, who was he trying to beef with? Somebody that came from the senior home? Like, yeah, I don't imagine <laughs> how you could still have beef in your 50s. I know. Like the only time I can see that like being possible is if it's something related to your family. Yeah. Well, that's Outside why alcohol that. sucks, dude. Everybody, yeah, everybody right. like gets tough on alcohol. Yeah. yeah. Nobody gets stuff on like other shit. I've always said, man, I'd rather smoke weed than drink any day. Mm -hmm. You know, you get happy, hungry, and sleepy on weed. Mm -hmm. When you drink, it's like you turn into a dickhead. I don't get, I don't get angry when I drink, but I get super paranoid when I smoke weed. So if I had to do one, I'd probably go with the alcohol. Oh really? Yeah, like I'd be more comfortable like drinking, 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 and driving than smoking weed and driving. <laughs> Stop. I'm like, I'm dude, I'm well, fucking. Well, I guess the whole time you drive and you're doing two miles an hour, like, bro, I got, I'm, I got, okay, you're not going fast enough to injure anyone. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you could run a kid over. high. he's fine. I, you're doing three miles yeah. an hour. Yeah, like. I get the hand on like ten and two. I got my seatbelt on, which is good. I should be wearing that anyway. Going four yeah. miles an hour. But I, I think every every time I see headlights behind me, I'm like, oh fuck, that's a cop, and I'm like trying to like stay <laughs> in between the lines. I'm going so slow, I'm going the speed limit. Speaking of going like three miles an hour, my friend, his like uh, speedometer was broken on his car. He had like this old Honda Accord. 
and he was going down Town Line Road by Hop Hog High School, Dave, like where like Branch and Ellie's and shit is. Oh, so, yeah. Branch and so, we, so he's dri- he's driving and he, yeah, shout out Branch. Go Buffalo yeah. Chicken Roll from there. They're good. Fucking fire. Lambing. He he got pulled over and he's like, <laughs> you know how fast you were going? And the kid's like, was I speeding? And he's like, he's like, no, you were going 15 miles per hour. No. Yeah. Oh, but he could, his speedometer wasn't working. He was like stoned to the bone. So he, like, he had no idea. Stoned to the bone. <laughs> He was going 15, but I mean, like, what's the big deal? Town line's 30. I yeah, but there's a minimum speed limit on yeah. some Yeah, if you're not like, driving yeah. safely. My sister got pulled over for going too slow in the Northern State one time. That I get. Yeah. That yeah, I get, because the speed limit's 55 miles an I hour. I think the minimum is 40, 45. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I get that, but on, the, on a side block, do you doing 15? <laughs> Dude, but, I'd be so embarrassed to tell anyone that. Like, yo, you <laughs> sissy. Like, you couldn't even go the minimal. Like, everyone's speeding, and, like, you can't even, you can't even get it up to 40. That is hilarious. So what? So it just didn't work at all, or it went up to a certain speed. And he was just trying to guess how fast he was going. It, ne- it didn't work at all. Oh, but so then, it, was, but, it was pinned at zero. But that stopped his like odometer too. So like when he had to sell his car, his car might have had like two hundred thousand miles on it, but it was still reading eighty. <laughs> 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 oh my god! Remember when people thought you could just put the car in reverse? Dude, that was that's like Ferris Bueller's day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like that shit doesn't work. There's the movies. That shit's so funny. I mean, maybe maybe it must have worked at work work some point. Yeah, I guess the old cars, right? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I remember hearing a story. My This is a, I guess it's sort of funny, but it sort of makes sense. My uh, great grandfather was a police officer in New York City, and he was a police officer when cars were invented. Holy shit. Yeah, so this, I, it's my great grandfather. Yeah. I never knew him, but I knew my great grandmother. So she's the one that used to tell me about it, about the, tell me the stories about him. And the original cars that the police had in New York City, they chinsed out, and they were like, there was like, it was this is like when cars looked like carriages still yeah. because they were transitioning. So the New York police the New York City Police Department chinsed out and didn't buy the upgraded cars with the windshield. So the cars were like an open carriage with like a, a roof thing to pull over if it were like drizzling. And but there was no windshield in these because the NYPD was cheap as fuck back then. Yeah. And uh, so in the winter time they were supposed to drive around a certain amount of miles each night in these little buggies. But it would be cold as fuck. Yeah. So nobody wants to drive in these buggies. And not that they're going fast, but if, uh, just imagine driving around going 15, 20 miles an hour. And yeah. you're supposed to ride around for eight hours each night in this buggy. So what the NYPD had done was drive around in these buggies and they knew exactly how many miles each person's like patrol route should be. So what they would do is they'd log the uh, odometer when you were leaving and they'd be like, okay, you're supposed to have traveled 37 miles. And then if you came back and you were less than that 37 miles, you would get like reprimanded in some way. So my grandfather and the other guys <laughs> that did the, uh, the the shift, they didn't want to drive around in the winter when it's freezing out. Like no fucking gloves, windshield. <laughs> no windshield. Or they jacked the back of the car up. Yo, he said, well, they made a deal with a guy that had a, uh, a garage, like a, like a, like a, where you'd go to get your cars repaired and they would rent his garage out at night <laughs> and they would pull into his garage. They'd pop up the, uh, they'd pop up the buggy and they would just let the wheels spin. <laughs> That's so <laughs> fucking funny. Put a, bl- a, bl- a brick or something on the gas pedal and, it, and they would sit there and they said there was a, a, like a coffee shop next door and they didn't want to get caught in the coffee shop. So he's like, yeah, they'd be sitting there playing cards in this garage like all, all, all night while the wheels are spinning in the back of the, in the, back of the buggy hilarious. to get the mileage up to where they needed it. That's fucking great, dude. Yeah. Dude, no windshield's dangerous. All the rocks that like hit your windshield while you're driving, like imagine just taking one of those to the dome. No. Yeah. I couldn't well, imagine I mean, that. There's also not cars doing fucking they weren't going, 50, they weren't going 60 as fast. miles an hour back then. I know, then but even if you're, going, if you're going 30 and a rock hits you, like going the opposite Yeah, but direction. there's nothing like, you know, no one's peeling out back then to fucking shoot a rock up. Also, I don't know if they were that long ago through a rock and asphalt yeah it was still pretty dirt yeah back then i don't know where i don't know where he was working but he might have been driving on dirt roads too it's like still wooden or at least wheels. Cobblestone. Yeah, like cobblestone i've always like i've always loved that man you see like the old videos or pictures of them like building the skyscrapers in the city yeah. i love that on the yeah. Fucking yeah i love that shit i don't know why i geek out about that so much but no, i love it dude. it's sick like the picture of like the guys eating lunch at the top like oh because i was when rock. men were men yeah like could you think about being up there terrence because i know you're, you're 
you're up there. Could you think about being up there with no safety harness? Or, well, go, or, going up that high, like em, rope? Em, Empire, because I'm always up there, like not tied off anyway. But like when you talk about being up there, like yeah. a thousand feet with yeah. nothing, dude, that's wild. Wild. I remember hearing the stories back, you know, when they were like building these skyscrapers and the bridges, when they were pouring the concrete, people would fall. Yeah. Oh, no, that's it, it. That's there's it. There's like a lot of bodies in the Throg's Next Bridge yeah. and shit wow. like that in Verrazano. Like, man, people died. And then there was people waiting online because, like, that, like, at the time, like, this, like, whole, like, industrial shit was going on. Like, People were fucking. They were in a depression, so people would be waiting for a job. Someone falls and dies, and you're online just waiting to jump like right in there. Can you imagine that? Like, right fucking yo, crazy. We lost Terrence. Nick, you're up. Fuck yeah, yeah I'm in, baby. <laughs> Let's go. How many people do you think died a year building the city? Dude, I don't. A know. lot. Terrence, hit that up. Yeah, Terry back G. then they didn't even really keep track. You don't think so? Nah, uh, there was no, there was track. no, there was no safety. It was just sort of like get the job done. I'm, I'm assuming. That, that's why unions got started. It was like to take care of like the family, like after like they lost somebody and oh, like cool. cover their funeral expenses and stuff. Like everyone would pull money together, so like that wasn't on the burden of their family to like bury them, so they could get a proper burial for like their oh, wow. coworker. That's cool. Yeah, I don't know how true that is about the bodies and the cement of the bridges, but that's like a thing I had always heard that it was super well, dangerous. I heard that through like the mafia was, was like say, that's like, where like the mob where was dumping dump them because they were yeah. in charge of a lot of the concrete unions and things. Supposedly like that. the Meadowlands, that's like uh, there's supposed to be a lot of bodies in the Meadowlands when they were first building it. That the mob was like dumping their bodies. Well, that wow. was that was the move back then. It was like, oh, we know that they're paving this road. The road's all ready. Let's go dig this this person in and cover it up, and then they'll pave over it tomorrow. Yeah, they probably won't touch it for fucking. Yeah, they'll leave centuries. it for fifty years. Yeah, and- I heard the uh, you know the Jimmy Hoffa thing. Yeah, where was he supposedly buried? In the Meadowlands, oh, okay. allegedly. That's what I heard. I think there's a lot of different ones, but one of them was like uh, supposedly he's in like the north end of the end zone ah. in the Meadowlands. <laughs> I hated that movie, by the way, The Irishman. That was about Jimmy Hoffa, right? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Dude, because they made Robert De Niro look like he was still 30. I know. Yeah. So that was weird. That was weird. I don't he looked 30, but he moved like he was 72. I don't, when uh, he's beating up the guy in front of like the, the fruit stand or whatever, yeah. stomping him out. Yo, and I felt like, as you could tell. <laughs> he looked so bad. Dude. The computer image like didn't match up. It looked like a bad Instagram or Snapchat filter where like it didn't yeah. match up onto the face. And like the face swap. He's in what, like his late seventies? Yeah, yeah. He's he's up there. That was wild. Like you can't give some young kid a shot to like be yeah. like a young Robert De Niro. Like you gotta have De Niro act as a thirty year old. I'm not. Like, I'm not a De Niro fan. No, no. Nah, maybe when he was younger. When he was younger. Yeah, he, he has not, like a not, good not, body of work. Not, well, he was in the Goodfellas. Goodfellas. He was good. Godfather. Godfather. Cape Fear. Cape he was Fear. awesome in Cape Fear. Wasn't he in the boxing movie too? No, that was which one? Sylvester Stallone. No, <laughs> Rocky. Um, <laughs> no, he was. No, in, he was. Uh, he's million in a dollar baby. No, that movie's amazing. No, the uh, the, the, uh, the something. The guy with, with the guy that became the heavyweight champ. He was the, the dock boxer. worker. The uh, boxer. That was C- Cinderella Man. Yeah, was wasn't he in Cinderella that's Man? Ra- that's no, Russell Crowe. That. Yeah, that's Russell Crowe. No, bo- uh, b- uh, Boulder. Was De Niro? Oh, oh, he was um, Raging Bull. Raging Bull. Raging Bull. Raging Bull. Knew it. Was uh was De Niro in the Bronx Tale? No, right? Yeah. He yeah. was in the Bronx yeah, Tale too. He's Calodro's father. Oh, that's right. He was. Yeah, that's right. Any kind of mob movie, he's gotta have a piece yeah, of it. Yeah, I was about to say that. He's definitely in a lot of shit. Yeah, him, Joe Pesci, him, Joe Pesci, was great Pesci too. and Al Pacino are in every mob movie. Yo, Joe Pesci, my favorite was my cousin Vinny. Yeah, he's tremendous. Loved him in that's that. That's like dude. a universal Casino. movie. Casino yeah. was another good one. I liked him in Casino. Casino's great. Dude, that at that scene in Casino where they just beat him and his brother to, and then bury him alive. Dude, that was one of the most brutal scenes you'll ever watch. Ruthless. And Goodfellas when he just like fucking starts killing people for like no fucking reason. I love when he in Goodfellas he was flipping out because uh, they were saying he's funny and he's like, "What am I? What am I? Clown? I'm like, like, I, funny like I amuse funny. you. He's like I amuse you with something." Didn't he shoot? He shot that kid in the foot, right? Spider. He's like, I thought you said yeah. you get use were good or whatever. Yeah, he's like, like yeah. I thought you said you could dance. <laughs> yeah, wasn't it yeah. the Bronx Tale? No, no, no that's good fellas. That was good fellas. When they're when they're going to bury that body upstate and they stop at his uh, mom's house to get a knife and she's like, oh, it's two in the morning. Let me make you sauce. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And the guy, the guy's still alive. And then Joe Pesci like goes fucking, fucking ham on yeah. him with the knife and just starts stabbing the shit out of him. Yeah, talking about the uh, the painting with the dogs. Yeah, one goes one way, one looks the other. It's crazy though because like I know those movies and movies, but like there has to be some truth behind it man oh yeah you know you watch these documentaries about these mobsters like you ever see a documentary about the ice man goodfellas is no. based off of henry hill oh He's so it is person. based yeah, yeah like yeah. that whole lufthansa heist that's real shit oh wow yeah yeah and henry hill's still alive too yeah 
Henry Hill, he went into witness protection for a while, and then everyone that he was involved with that wanted to kill him is dead or in prison for the rest of their lives, and that's why he's just sort of like, he goes on Stern every once in a while. Oh, shit. So he's still out there. You guys ever see a documentary about the Iceman? No. Nah. The guy, the murderer? Chuck that Liddell? Was the, the <laughs> <laughs> Chuck Liddell. <laughs> I love Chuck Liddell, dude. Shout out, OG. <laughs> Talk about OG UFC fighters, dude. Clay Guida last night. Yeah, dude. Clay Guida was up and at it, bro. Who did he fight? I didn't watch the fights last Leonardo night. Santos, dude, and he submitted him. Really? Yeah, yeah. Leo really Santos joke, is right? a, yeah, and Leo Santos is a legitimate yeah, world, champion. world champion. champion world black belt. Yeah, world champion black, black belt. It's fucking nuts. Dude, it's like he was, <laughs> I was telling Sean last night, I'm like, oh man, Clay Guida, yo, he's like, Clay Guida's going to get his ass kicked. Guy's been fighting forever. I'm like, dude, you can't count Clay Guida, Clay Guida out, dude. Sure shit. He gets like knee in the face, gets dropped. Sean's looking at me. I'm like, all right, sit, <laughs> sit the fuck down, dude. Like, it ain't over yet. And sure shit, Clay Guida's cardio, bro, he just fucking came through and just got this guy extremely tired and fucking submitted him. Clay, Clay Guida has what I call like weaponized cardio. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. Clay Guida is a, a strange personality archetype. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> Elaborate a little bit, All right. please. So he's not like us, and he's probably not like anyone I've ever met. He's the type of person that, like, maybe a cartoon character would make. So he's the type of guy. Like, I've hung out with him a couple of times, and Did I you really, yeah, oh, that's at, awesome. at UFC events where my friends were fighting. So uh -huh. I was like staying at the fighters' hotel, like helping the guys get ready. And he's been on cards that my friends have been on before. So I've been in hotels. Uh, one particular time I was in a hotel from, with him for like three or four days and like you see all the other guys <laughs> that, that are fighting. So you got, to, you got to really chill with him. Yeah, for, a little, awesome. for, a little, for a little bit and I was getting ready for a fight too so I was doing cardio at the same time with him where we he was cutting weight, we were yeah. in the gym together and stuff like that. He's one of the dudes that there's definitely, I'm not going to say it's something that's off but I'll just say there's something that's different. Like, you ever see someone with a little too much pop in their step all the time yeah. <laughs> like he's like he's that guy he like bounces around like like he's he's like the energizer bunny and he says hello to everyone so like if oh, he's, so he's, a, he's a nice guy if he's walking down the street he says hello to every single person he passes on that street whether like as if he knows them whether he knows them or not like he high fives and pounds everyone going down the hallway <laughs> like that's how i met him he's like yo what's up bro gives me a pound and just keeps move keeps it moving and then like that would happen like a couple times a day that's awesome. Until like we were just like friends. That's yeah. what hey, what's up, bro? You want to do some cardio? <laughs> yeah. But he's just like one of those guys that's like an energizer, but like, hey, what's up, man? Uh, uh, what's going on? And then like an hour later, you're at the gym. He's like, ah, oh, what's up, man? Here, give me a high five. And then like he's just like keep, keeps it moving, keeps it moving, like like just never stops. But like if you watch how he fights, how he's like always oh, like juddery, yeah. Juddery. Like he's he's definitely something a little bit off with his chemistry, like a little misfire going on he, upstairs. There's something. And yeah. he's got it. Yeah, it's like a little bit of there's something he's got, and he's it's got he's got it. Yeah. Like he's just like ah, 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 no, ah, ah, ah. Like he's gonna be one of those old men that's got sound effects when he moves around. Like, yeah. oh, no, no, oh. yeah. like, like, like I'm not I'm not lying at all. Oh, he's he's got it. He bounces around. I wish I had that kind of energy, dude. His cardio is phenomenal though. Yep. Watching him fight last night, dude, he did not stop. The only time he stopped was he got knee in the face, and the guy has like fifty something fights. He's, he's like 38 and 16. Dude, Aldo's how got a ton he? of fights, too. I was going to say, how old? He's 39. 39. Good for him. That's awesome. Still making that paper. Yeah. I mean, probably to get paid that much last night. What do you think? A couple hundred thousand? Guida? Yeah. He's been in the UFC for 20 years. Though. He's yeah. got to be making pretty decent Terry G, money. Can you look point. that up? 150, gotcha. 150, maybe. I hope they take care of him. 150,000? Maybe. I said a couple hundred thousand. Nah, dude. He they, called out Nate Diaz after the fight, too. That would oh, be a he, fight. I'm not like, I don't get excited about fights, but that would be a fight I would be excited. It's a rematch from a decade ago. Yeah. Guida beat him a yep. decade ago. I was going to say, Guida's probably going to beat him today, yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah. Probably. I like Nate Diaz and his brother, but they just have not evolved, and I think neither has Clay Guida. But <laughs> <laughs> so the exact same thing is going to happen. Yes, exactly. The only difference is Clay Guida is losing his hair now. <laughs> Guida, his got, hair. Guida got 101,000, including 80,000 base salary and 21,000 sponsoring earnings. So he made about 200,000 last night. Santos total payout will be 55,000, including 50,000 base salary and 5,000 sponsorship. Damn. That sucks. Yeah. <laughs> that fucking sucks, dude. I know it sucks, but like at the same time, it's like 100 100 grand for a night's work. Like people make that need. Yeah, but the, it's it. not just 100 grand. Like you got to pay your Oh, managers, taxes and you, you Oh, yeah, you have to pay out all that shit. Where, yeah. where was the fight? Where was the fight? 
Um, Apex Center. They were in Vegas, right? It was the Apex Center. Their training uh, center in Vegas. Uh, so these two is here. So like basically the way that would work was if they make if you make a hundred grand in a UFC fight, you're losing ten percent to your manager, ten percent to your coach's gym and stuff like that. So you're at eighty. And then that 80 is what you'd pay taxes on. Oh. So out of that 80, you end up maybe with like 60. 50 something. Uh, yeah, why 50, can't they, 60. Why can't they do that with child support, dude? Uh-huh. Like, why can't I pay child support after my shit gets taxed? Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> that should be. But yeah, so he, so you're losing a lot of money. So that 100,000 yeah. goes quick. And plus, like, no, nobody really realizes, like, on that level, it's like you're getting ready for, what, 10 weeks, 12 weeks before the fight. Like, your bills, those 12 weeks are not normal people bills. And they're also like, not getting paid. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, you're, you're not getting paid unless you actually fight. But yeah. those bills, like, it isn't like, oh, the, like the money that it costs me to live when I'm getting ready for a fight, it's like three times as much as it costs me to live yeah, when I'm in, not. Like, in groceries. My food, my food bill goes to two, my food supplement bill is $200 a week. Like, yeah. I, figured, I, I figured this all out. $200 a week, then you're at probably another $100 a week in massage, PT, and different like types of medical appointments just to like keep yourself healthy. Yeah, your, all your recovery aspects yeah. of it. So you're at like almost like, I want to say like a grand, maybe like a grand and a half a month in expenses. Damn. That would normally be 50% of that, right, the right. regular way that you'd live without a crazy supplement schedule, not eating organic food, six more meals, seven small meals a day. Yeah. And so it's like your cost of living increases so much. So it's like at the end of the day, like... <sighs> It, it's not a great sport to be involved with unless you're in like the top five or the top ten of your division. Yeah, and, and unless you're like a Conor McGregor who like figured out the marketing aspect of it as well. Well, I mean, he didn't even like he figured out he was the right place person at the right time. Like he, he could have been American, and as an American, he wouldn't have gotten as popular as quickly. He got popular very fast because he had Ireland behind him. A whole country, a few million people in it that are not good at anything. That's a good point. Like, no, complete Looney Tunes. That's yeah, a good complete, point. Complete Looney Tunes, but they're not good at anything. Like, in America... Like I'm not it's, not, it's not being mean. It's being truthful. Yeah. Like in America, we can be fans of a multitude of different sports. That's true. And on an international level, we're really, really, really good at a lot of big sports. So it's like, oh, you could be behind like be behind the u.s ski team you can be behind the u.s soccer team you can be behind any professional sports team basketball the dream team there's like, two irish stars that i know of, uh, conor mcgregor and sinead o'connor yeah, that's it, it. <laughs> name one other person <laughs> name one other famous person from ireland ever yeah. can't do it no, can't do right. it can't you're do right. it you're right so like it would be like being from long island and being a great like long island athlete but nobody at long island was any good at anything like nobody's in Hollywood. There's no Irish people in Hollywood. Mm-hmm. Like, that's a great point, dude. Because I thought that he just figured it out as far as being the villain and having no. people hate him. But that you nailed it. It's he, the fucking having the whole country behind him. Yeah, and like think about that. Like if you already have a built-in a built-in fan base of 10 million people that like you just because you have the same accent as them. Yeah. Like that's gonna send you up into the forefront. Like every single person's buying your T-shirt. Every single person, every single one of them is gonna know your name. Every kid's gonna be like growing up. I want to be like Connor. Yeah. Man, you could They're be the. Bu- from Long Island, Long Island's probably about the same size as Ireland. You could be, we have how many UFC fighters? Like, you could be the man. Like, you could be, like, Bill O'Reilly on Fox News. That guy's from Long Island. Like, we have so many famous people that yeah. have come out of Long Island that you really got to be. Bismarck R.I.P. <laughs> Eddie, Eddie Murphy, bro. <laughs> No, Eddie, you're right, Eddie Murphy. Though. Eddie Murphy, Charlie Murphy. No, you're right, though, bro. I never thought of that. I think that's exactly the reason why now that he got so big. No, and good for him, too, because he made that money and he made the sport, like, a lot more popular for everyone. Like, before that, before Conor McGregor came around, I would go to my in-law's house and... Uh, Nobody really asked me anything about MMA, but after Conor McGregor came around, like I'm having conversations with 65, 70 year olds about MMA <laughs> because they're all fired up on Conor McGregor. He's yeah. gonna do it, oh, dude. Yeah. When I when I was fighting, I I would I was working at cable, and if I would come into somebody's house with a shiner, they never said, "Oh, you you're a fighter, like you train MMA." It was boxer. Mm-hmm. It was boxer. And like I was like, eh, I'm not gonna sit here and try to explain to him like what mixed martial arts is. So they're like, oh, you box? I'm like, yeah. They're like, yeah, yeah, I could tell. I or could tell. their ears, it was, oh, you're a wrestler. Yeah, wrestler. Yep, always. But yo, then we also had Jose Aldo on last night. Still got it, dude. He still got it, bro. 
But it was, I'm very surprised that he beat Font the way he did because Rob Font is good. Yeah, and he and was younger. Uh, yeah, he was the uh, underdog, Jose Aldo. Not by much, though. Not by much. But Jose Aldo, man, dropping down to 135. I think he's like mid 30s, right? 34. He's 34, 30, yeah. yeah. Did we do this last week? We did. Yeah, he's 34. 34, 35. You know, but the weird thing I was telling D Rock before been fighting the, since he's twenty. I know that's crazy. That's a long time in the UFC, dude. Yeah, thirty five. Thirty five. Yeah. But I was saying, um, I thought it was weird because there was a lot of opportunities that he rocked Font and Font went to the ground that he could have followed up with strikes, and he didn't. He went for like the submission. Do you think that Aldo has a shot at like getting back into the like the title sphere again? He's three and zero at bantamweight now. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, do you, I? I hope. I really feel like they the UFC did him real dirty. Because when he should have had a rematch against Connor that was right so, away, that was so unfair. And I, I know why they did it from yeah. a business perspective. Yep. They wanted Connor to have the belt. He spoke English well. He was had the he had the, all the pizzazz, yep. all the flashing lights, all the hate. Yep. <laughs> you know, like Connor, Connor had it, and you're not gonna and not for nothing. Like I did nine out of ten, nine at not nine even nine out of ten, ninety nine out of a hundred times. Aldo should have steamrolled him. Yes. Yeah, that yeah. was just a, it was just a fluke after he was on top for so you long, know, Con- and I was like, come on, man, Con- give the guy a shot. Connor can make magic happen, and like you can't take that away from him. Like yeah. he could go out there, and he has a higher percentage chance of doing something like that than everybody else in the UFC. And I'm not going to say he got lucky because obviously he was good at it, but like 99 out of 100 times, like most of those guys that he fought should have beat him. Mende- uh, Chad, Chad? Yeah, but that was set up for Connor to win. Well, I know, but he would have beat Connor. Yeah, 100%. For camp, 100%. Yeah. They're the only, like if you look at Connor's uh, like rise to greatness, 50% of the fights were were fights that were framed for Connor to win. Yeah, 100%. They were given unfair, he was given an unfair competitive advantage in addition to having an unfair, an unfairly financed and planned training camp Mm -hmm. as well. Because like nobody really knows this, but like the UFC will take somebody that they think is going to go somewhere and make them a lot of money, and they'll just say like, "Hey, yeah, don't worry about anything. Here's a hundred grand for your training camp. Oh, you don't have a good coach where you live? Here, stay in Dana's house in in, in Vegas. In Here's- Vegas, stay in Dana's house in Southern California, right next to this gym, and live there and just train for free. Oh, yeah. who you're fighting? You're fighting a six foot two southpaw. Bring him in. We're gonna fly in five six foot two southpaws for you to train with yeah. to get ready have for this fight. Have you seen the doc- Documentary that Conor McGregor has on Netflix. No, I it's good. I haven't. It's seen It's good, it. but like you see, dude, the the UFC rented him a mansion. Fuck Netflix in <laughs> in Las Vegas to train out of for Cuties. all those fights. Yeah, that's insane. And yeah, and he's, stars, and he's fighting somebody like you or I. Yeah, that and are the paying stars fifty aligned. bucks a private. Like yeah, after he beat Aldo and he went up to go, you know, be the double champ. The stars aligned perfectly for him because Eddie Alvarez at the time was the champ, and that is like the best possible matchup for somebody like Conor McGregor. I know Eddie Alvarez is really good, but that matchup, Eddie Alvarez is like a defensive liability. If you watch any of his fights, he gets tagged and rocked all the time. Every fight he's in, in is in a, a war. He's not like defensively sound. Somebody like Conor, who's super accurate like that, that was like the perfect matchup for him. Yeah, yeah, I see that. And Conor with that style, man, he's just like a touch and go, but he has power. Mm-hmm. He doesn't sit there. His power like, at that weight, which most people don't have. Yeah, like the lighter in weight you are, the less the the less weight you're going to have behind your punches. Yeah, and that's why people like the heavyweight division. Oh, people get knocked out. Right. But so for Connor at 145 to be able to have that steam and that and that that, that number two punch and sit people down. Yeah. That's a that's something that most guys don't have. Yeah, and Eddie Alvarez came out and said that he's never been hit harder than when he got hit by Conor McGregor. Wow. So. It's a compliment. And he's accurate as fuck. Yeah. It's not just no. powerful. He's very accurate. He's like an, he, almost like an Anderson. Yeah. yeah. Did you guys see Aldo? who Aldo called out after the fight? No. Did, who did he call out? Dillashaw. Did he? Really? Dude, that'd Dude, be fucking love dope. To watch that. That would be such that'd a be good a fight. Dope fight. Yeah, did, didn't it's Dillashaw exciting. get popped for fucking... Yeah, he... he, he three years ago, though. Yeah, his suspension's over. He's been back for uh, a little bit. He beat Sanhagen when he came back. Yeah. That's right. Well, dude, oh. that, was a, that was a big win for him, dude. Sanhagen's a fucking animal. Yo, Sanhagen almost ripped his fucking leg off. He did. Yeah. Yeah. That that was so he crazy. He was made to pieces in that first round, and TJ still whooped his ass for the next four rounds. I like Dillashaw, even though he's a cheater. Yeah. There's something <laughs> grimy and gritty about him that he would be in my friend's group if I knew him. If, like you, I ain't just if you ain't cheating, you ain't trying. Yeah, That's true. 
I know, and he's like a pretty boy who has like a little fucking griminess to him. Dude, he's tough. Yeah. He's got a bad reputation that like in the gym, in the gym he's, he's a dickhead. A dickhead like, yeah. If you spar him, he's trying to fuck you up. Like really? <laughs> yeah. There's a bunch yeah. of videos of him like sparring, like not like oh me and you are in the cage and we're sparring for fights, but like no, there's like ten groups of guys moving around on a mat at the same time sparring this group this pic this videos of him i've seen them kneeing people in the face and knocking them out what like dropping them yeah yeah if you oh spar tj dillashaw you fought him basically oh yeah. my god dude you think that's him being a dick or that's just the way he trains some people can't control themselves they don't have the ability to yeah i've read interviews with him about it he said he's just like i yeah, i'm just a competitor like it's just the way Doesn't i am matter. and he's yeah. like and you have to be that way if you're going to be the best i mean i guess he's right he ain't lying you I know. know we I trained Ryan LaFleur is like that. Yeah. Yeah, if you sparred with him, you're probably worse off sparring with him than you are actually fighting him. <laughs> and like an actual <laughs> that. Yeah, cuz I guess he has nothing to lose in sparring, right? So he's just going to come at you. I don't know. We had some times where I've had to just be like, "No, I'm not doing this. Stop." <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Stop. Wait, yo, can you tell the story where you said like I don't know if you can tell a story where like you were getting you were rolling with somebody and like you just tapped because you didn't want to roll anymore. Like, didn't you? Did oh, you, little Eric. <laughs> <laughs> I was there that night. It was amazing. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Eric, uh, you want me to tell it? I, I don't care. You tell it because because he wouldn't let people leave if they beat him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I <he> uh, <laughs> tapped, I tapped him. And so this is one of my uh, let's let's preface it. So yeah, our friend it. Eric Yurask who's a, a professional fighter and like really big, big, big coach of like some famous guys now. He works with Dominic Cruz. He was the head coach at Phuket Top Team. Now he's out at uh, AKA and what's Jocko uh, no, Will? Victory. Victory is at Jocko Will. Was he at uh, American Top Team too? Um, no. Alliance? Yeah, he was at Alliance. Now he's at Victory with uh, Jocko and Dean Lister. He was at Extreme Couture back in the day when oh, that was man. like the gym too. And he's just one of those guys that like, if you if you get him, he's better now than he used to be. But if you if you if you catch him in the gym and you get him, he would just be like, "No, we have to keep rolling." He'd want to like <laughs> always like redeem himself uh, and and not go out with with you getting the better of him. And it would get to the point where I'm like, "Man, I gotta go. I'm hungry. I got dinner coming up. <laughs> <laughs> like I still gotta take a shower." So if you want to tell the story, dude. yeah, this was like I I was still pretty new. I don't even think I've been training a year. So and uh, it was, dude, it was like it was late too. It was like almost ten o'clock at night, and we were all still training. I had I had just gotten out of the shower, like I was done, and they were still rolling. And Eric, Ott here caught little Eric, and Eric was like, "Nope, we're doing it again." And Eric, I was like, "Fine," and but this went on like a couple times. Yeah, and we're there, we're like I'm, I'm I should have left like a half hour, yeah. ago, twenty <laughs> minutes ago, and I'm not even showered yet. I'm still on the mat. It was like three five rounds <laughs> deep, but the last submission was Ott tapping Little Eric and then like the rest of them were kind of stalemates where there was no sub and I remember coming out and they're like yelling at each other like one more one more so they and start I'm like rolling. no I gotta go <laughs> yeah so Eric Ott finally is like fine and they start rolling and Little Eric taps him and Eric gets up he's like cool no no, no yeah yeah I go in the yeah. shower <laughs> he gets up he goes in the shower or whatever it comes out and like Eric's still on the mat and uh, they, they say something and, little, and Ott's like, yeah, I let you tap me because I'm hungry. I got to go. <laughs> <laughs> and, I ran out, and I ran out the door. <laughs> That's fucking hilarious, dude. Yeah, little Eric was like, what? No, you did. What? Fuck you. Get back here. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. Dude, that was a funny story when I heard that shit. Yeah. Well, He's one of a kind, dude. He's look, one of a kind. I've never, I never rolled with anybody that was like that, though. He was definitely one of a kind dude. Yeah, I mean, even if you, in the middle of a role, a role, if you started like getting the better of him or making him have to work harder, he'd start like punching you. <laughs> <laughs> like you know how many like jujitsu roles turned into fights. With I was me about to say, yeah, we're doing no gi here, bro. What the hell? Yeah, yeah. We had a, I had a couple of those. We had a guy, he was insane, um, that I used to train with at Long Island MMA. His name was Joey. I'm not going to say his last name, but he was insane. Like, and I'm not saying that he was insane to like describe him he actually was in an insane asylum and escaped out of an insane asylum oh my god three I think years I, ago i think i know this guy dude yeah okay, uh -huh. what's your story though so he was a he was a he was crazy yeah and he was young and he was one of those people when you look in their eyes i call it like the pit bull eyes like there's like a weird glassy look in them that they're not looking at you they're just looking right through you thousand, all the time that, thousand yard stare bro yep, the thousand yard stare yeah. And uh, his eyes, there's two people. There's two kinds of eyes. There's windows and there's mirrors. And his eyes were the 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 windows that you just look right through the back of his head, and there's nothing there. <laughs> <laughs> 
But he was a pretty good fighter. Yeah. Didn't he only strike? He was only a striker, I no, think. No, he wrestled. He wrestled. Oh, he did. But he only striked in fights. Yes. But he was a very good wrestler. And... Um, and this guy, you'd be in the gym, and as soon as you, I'm going to talk about his first MMA fight. I was at his first MMA fight. Everybody, he comes in the ring. The, they call his name. He runs. They like everyone runs around. He runs around the the octagon twice. Maybe it might have been three times. And on the third time, he stops at his opponent and just screams in his face, ah! <laughs> like like something that you'd be like, oh, this guy's going to be like a clown. Like he doesn't really know what he's doing. Yeah. Goes back to his corner. Oh fight comes right out fucking yells at the guy in the beginning of the fight and then just pounds the guy's head in and the fight's over in like 30 seconds oh my god like this total 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 nut job so this guy in the gym was one of these guys that like as soon as you'd start getting the better of him and like you'd be doing grappling and then next thing you know he's throwing high kicks at you and you're like what the fuck <laughs> you'd be wearing the gi and next thing you know you're like oh i got his back he'd be like biting you in the forearm oh my god so, so one of the days i'm training we're at pro class now this is mma small gloves not really supposed to be hitting each other and i'm going with joey and i'm getting the better of him yeah we stand up from this wild scramble he throws a fucking hook and hits me in the eye oh my god and like I'm like mad, but the thing is, like, I know he can't help himself. Okay. Like, he doesn't have it in him to help himself. But I, like, flip out and fucking push kick, like, Spartan kick him in the chest, sort of like, what the fuck are you doing? And, like, we're going, we're, we're, we're yelling at each other. We get separated. And I'm, like, really mad because pro class was in the middle of the day at, like, like 12 o'clock. And then I used to put my suit back on and go back to, to work. Yeah, I was about to say that. So I'm like, now I got to go back to work with fucking my black eye. Like, yep. it's bleeding. But, uh, he was he was one of those guys, and yeah. he ended up having to get taken out of the uh, MMA pool by a friend of ours. He uh, did the same thing to somebody else a couple weeks later, and uh, and my our friend uh, Marcus Lauro Galvo ripped his knee out of his socket and ended his fight career. Dude, so I think it's I think it's the same kid, Joey. So I was I was sparring with him at Lima one day, mm -hmm. and he was getting ready for a boxing match. I was getting ready for an MMA match, so. D'Angelo's like, all right, we're just going to do round the boxing, and then I'll get somebody in here to, like, spar with you for MMA. So I was like, all right, cool. So we're boxing, and I'm working him because he was a little shorter than me. Yes, I think it's yep. the same guy. It's got to be. Yeah. So I was working him. I had him cheese curled up against the cage. So, like, I hit him with a body shot. He, like, kind of, like, hunched over, and I was just going to come in with an uppercut. So when I came in for the uppercut, he came from his little curled up position on his feet and fucking backhanded me with the boxing gloves on, but caught my jaw with his forearm and fucking dropped me. Ooh. Yeah, I went right down. Like It was like a flash knockout. Like I, I just dropped and I came back up. And then I was like, holy shit. So after the round, Anthony's like, yo, what's, what's going on? Like, did you slip or something? I'm like, no, he fucking did a spinning back fist, dude. And he yelled at the kid. He's like, what the fuck are you doing? This is boxing rounds, man. Like, mm -hmm. you don't fucking do that shit. But I've heard, I've heard stories. I've heard stories about him, like even like, uh, with like Hugh McKenna. Oh no, 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 hundred percent. This with, is someone with the, with the tennis ball under the chin. Mm -hmm. He's like, all right, so like you would have a tennis ball under your chin to make sure that like you kept your your chin down, and the the whole point of the drill was to get the, the ball from under the chin. So after the round stopped, the kid fucking clips Hugh, and th to get the ball yeah. out from under him. Yo, there's definitely there was definitely something wrong with him Dick. because fast forward a few years later. Somebody texts me an uh, a new one of those I don't know what they call it is an APV when the police put like a miss uh, like APB, we have yeah. an APB out and it would, it, it said uh, somebody escaped from one of the uh, the psychiatric wards on Long Island. Uh, this was a description of him. He's known to be dangerous. Oh my and god! <laughs> and known to be dangerous, and then it was it was this guy Joey's name. Oh my god! So he had been and like does, it doesn't surprise anyone that meets him meets him for thirty seconds. No, wouldn't 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 put it bad. Like oh yeah, that definitely he would be somebody that would be in an insane asylum. Yeah, but he escaped. Oh my god! Yeah, and I still that's a new level of since. crazy slippery yeah. cr slippery crazy. That's yeah, you got watch out for crazy. <laughs> No. But just imagine, imagine, <laughs> yo! But imagine you had to fight this guy. Oh, like, no. like he he had like I think three or four legitimate MMA fight. Won all of them undefeated. Oh, wow. Won all of them, and like he was just the type of person like totally fucking nuts. Yeah, totally fucking nuts. So crazy. 
like there's crazy people in the UFC, like Jason Miller. Like they've had crazy people over the years, but they're all people you could have a conversation with. I've never even had a conversation with this guy. Like he was that that off. Oh my god. But super athlete and yeah, like yeah. tough dude. Yep. Yeah, now that I remember it too, I definitely did some rounds of rolling with him too. But I don't know. I, I just I hated like I I had to cross train for the fights, but like I don't know, like you don't get the same love in MMA schools that you do in like a shit school. Like I would go in there and I would spar man and like after rounds of sparring, I was like by myself in the corner, like ungloving, taking my wraps off and shit, you know, like it's like yeah, I just came here to fight. That's like exactly what I came here to do. Like I wasn't training, it was like a fucking legit fight there. You know? But I guess that's the difference between MMA schools and JIT schools. Like did, the did you like that? Did it help you like get more dialed in? The fact that like you weren't there to make friends, you were just there to fucking well, yeah, after, the, after the first session, yeah. And I remember Eric, when we get ready for fights, he's like, yeah, come over to this school and do some cross training. It'll be good. And it was like a, like Storm the Dojo, dude. It was like me, Hugh, and Galvez. <laughs> do you remember this? Do you remember the story? No, what, was I there or no? <laughs> yeah, you were the one that set it up. He told us to roll over to Vamos. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I remember this. <laughs> and we just like stormed the school. And we did, like We came in for a sparring night. And you're like, yeah, yeah, I'll set it up to, to show up, dude. Did it, it work out all right, though? Or? <laughs> yeah, <dude>. <laughs> For you guys. <laughs> did it, did, did it work, did it work out? out right? Oh, my God. Yeah, it worked out all right. <laughs> but like, what, what you're saying, it's I, when you're fighting, you know, it, it takes a little bit longer to break that ice before yeah. people start getting like, all right, this guy's cool. Like, yeah. Jiu-jitsu, everyone's a little bit more like cool and relaxed but like if you're showing up to train with other guys who are getting ready to fight especially if it's like somebody that's in your weight class it get, it's chippy and it's going to take a little while before people kind of like warm up to you yeah. I, I, I noticed that too there's a couple of times I went to other gyms where it was like what the fuck yeah. you know like I, Eric you know like when we first started going to Belmore I was there for six months before anybody said a fucking word to me yeah six months yeah I think it's a whole punch in the face thing though like you could roll and like like sub somebody but like you're not really hurting them but when you get cracked in the mouth you're kind of just like motherfucker yeah like, you're hurting each other yeah, you're fighting yeah. even though it's not going on your record you're, fu you're fighting yeah. you know and it just takes a little while before people get comfortable with you when you're fighting each other I think they're you don't have that trust built in right away like it takes time before you're like alright this guy's cool we could go hard but we're not fucking trying to kill each other because you don't know like if, I've, if I show up at a gym and I never spar with this guy I'm like yeah, you know, I gotta fuck this guy up so I don't get fucked up. Yeah, you know, and I it, like the uncomfortable feeling. That's where I thrive. Do you really? Yeah, I love that shit. <laughs> I'd, I'd keep it like that all the time if I had the opportunity to. Really? Yeah, that uncomfortable feeling, I'm addicted to. What What about do you like? How, how uncomfortable were, were you when you were waiting for the train? <sighs> uh, you're welcome. Well, <laughs> <laughs> that's like I thrive in that type of setting. Like I like having a, a moderate to high level of anxiety all the time that's that, that's my mo like no i'm not i'm not even joking like i like getting to sparring late like when i get there like early <laughs> and i'm warmed up i perform worse i perform better with like a moderate level of anxiety like i need to show up if if, if sparring we're supposed to get there at 10 and rounds start at like 10 30 and i get there at like 10 20 and i'm like throwing my oh, i gotta get my wraps on i gotta get taped up i gotta get i gotta get ready real quick and then like i have i hit the bag for fucking half a round i'm good that's that's when i because you have my like best. urgency yeah i perform my best i don't know if it's the cortisol levels or at like where they need to be to have me dialed in but when i get there a half hour early i do my stretches i warm up i perform worse yeah i know that you for get fights too comfortable too. Ah, I could, There's I, a level of the, like, like you see me being, warm up. You're with me at fight. Like, when I used to fight, you were with me before. Uh, do I have elaborate warm ups? No. No, I hit the I hit Dude, the. You hit showed the up pads. to one fight like five minutes before, and it was the main event. <laughs> <laughs> you walked out of the rules meeting. That's the best. He's like, "You're gonna cancel my fight. I'm the main event. You want to lose all your money? Have fun. I'll go home and do drugs." <laughs> <laughs> And he was like, Dave, come on, we're going to get pizza. I was like, all right. Awesome. Yeah, didn't, didn't you say you also like to do a little microdosing before you uh, spar? Yeah, I microdose psilocybin mushrooms before I spar. Yeah, you said it like helps you dial in? Yeah, what it does is, uh, like I mentioned earlier, I've had some injuries and I had a, a very bad orbital fracture. And at the same time that I had the orbital fracture, I broke my nose. I needed like major surgery. And um, after that, I decided, before that, I was sort of like, under the impression, if you were a boxer or a kickboxer, an MMA fighter, I had this coach that you say, Eric, sometimes you want to win, you got to bring ass to get ass, son. <laughs> and Who I said had that? This older, awesome. this older black 
boxing coach I worked with. Sometimes you just got to bring ass to get ass, son. That's fucking awesome. And, uh, Those are very wise words. And uh, he, uh, Herman. And uh, so I was under the impression, like, Bloody sometimes name. you got to go get hit a couple of times <laughs> yeah. if you want to get, if you want to, if you want to go out there and win the round. So, like, I, I didn't mind getting hit when I was younger. Um, I didn't mind getting hit in the face. And sometimes I'd think it woke me up a little bit and really, like, got me going. So if I could go out there in a round and I'd get hit five or six times, but I'd hit the other guy, like, 15 times, I'm like, yeah, that was a good round. I won that round. Right. But after I broke my orbital and my nose, I needed surgery. I'm like, yeah, this doesn't translate well into small gloves MMA fights. Mm -hmm. And I started getting very tentative. And... I, I sort of had the idea like, okay, well, maybe I can get through a round where I get hit zero times or one time, but I hit the other guy five times. I'd rather win the round like that. Yeah. But I started dropping guys a lot less. Uh, I, I wasn't really like, I wasn't really landing good shots in sparring. I'd win the round, but it was sort of like mediocre rounds. And I realized that like when I would get in, in striking zone, sometimes I would think in my head like, oh, if I would have just thrown, I would have got him. And what the microdosing does is it eliminates that second thought uh, in my head, and I just sort of operate and do what I have to do to get the round done. And when I, when you can tell, sometimes I'll forget to microdose be before before I spar. Yeah. And you can tell the difference between I'll dr I drop people every time I microdose when we spar. Oh my god. And, and not like I drop people like I hit them with like a three hit combo like they're like one shot. Like one shot, and like I don't follow up. Obviously, I'm not a dickhead when I spar. I'm also not trying to hurt anyone. I'm like one of the people. I, I pride myself in being someone that doesn't really my hurt favorite, people. My favorite, my favorite story is when you broke this kid's nose, and you were like, "It's not my fault. He ran into my fist." <laughs> <laughs> That's also true. Yeah, they do that. People do that. That's also true. I literally didn't try to hurt this guy, and he did. I had my back on the wall. This guy was being super fleety, moving around on his feet, and. I was a bigger dude than him. I probably outweighed him by 15, 20 pounds. And uh, so I'm just like, yo, I'm not chasing this guy. I don't have it in me today. I was also not in fight shape. Yeah. And I was like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm just going to put my back on the fence and let this guy, if this guy wants to spar, he could, I'm, so I put my back on the fence and uh, he was trying to fucking chuck Liddell me with these big overhands. Ugh. So I fucking stuck my jab out and he fucking ran into it while he <laughs> chuck Liddell me and broke his own nose. <laughs> You gotta love guys like that, though, man. But they fucking come I mean, I'm you. not saying I didn't try to hit him, right? But I'm not saying like, I mean, you get your you get your nose broken by a jab with from a guy that's got his back on the fence. You had a you had put a little oomph on your trajectory coming in to get that done. That is true too. Yeah, but dude, that's you true. you also you're downplay your length and how strong you are. You fucking I got old man strength. Light, you know, it's like I got a lot of different strengths on my side. I got old man strength. <laughs> I got dad strength. I got 20 years of fight experience strength. I got a little bit of weightlifting yeah. strength. You, got, a lot that, of strength. you got that farm boy strength. I, yeah, dude. I threw. I used to throw. I used to have to unload like a ton of hay, throw them up into the second story of the barn. I got some some farmer strength. Yeah, fuck yeah. Like with, I, the only thing I don't really have, I don't have retard strength. And, uh, <laughs> it's debatable. <laughs> I don't have, I don't have, I, I didn't wrestle in high school or college, so I don't have wrestler strength, which yeah. are both legitimate types of strength oh, as of well. Course, I don't yeah. have, Eric will I don't also always say like, I don't have any explosiveness, which I disagree with. Nah, I'm a slow twitch white boy. <laughs> hard, hard disagree. Eric would always be like, Dave, you have explosiveness. I don't. Like, no, you, you do. I felt it. Yeah, I love rolling with Otto. It's a, it's a good roll. Yeah, don't you're gonna get Kamord. Yeah, it's just the first time everyone gets Kamord. Yep, and then like I'm a one trick pony. <laughs> but you said if someone pulls guard on you, you'll back up and say stand up like yeah, a man. Yeah, stand up and be a man. I love that. I love that shit. It's so fucking funny. That is the best shit ever. That or I'll grab their foot and I just run in a circle with it. <laughs> <laughs> Spin them on their back like a yeah, fucking turtle. Turtle dude. top. Should that is we, so um, funny. Should we try to get into this? Get your weight up, not your hate up. Yeah, sure. Who, Damn, someone else? He's excited. He's all smiley. About somebody this somebody else said they had one. I got, I got one. Good. Start when it off. Uh, you know, like when you're driving behind somebody and they fuck, they drive just like an asshole. They're real slow and everyone. You know, yeah, pretty they're much. They're not. They're, they're in the left lane doing the same thing as the right lane. Then you finally get up to pass them. You're so pissed off. You want to like fucking flip them off, and then it's an old lady. And you're like, fuck! I can't even be mad at you anymore. Yeah, I've been there, like, dude. I'm so I'm so pissed off that it's like an old lady, and I can't even be mad at her. This is but, after you've been driving behind her yeah, for ten minutes with your brights on, her with the yes. brights on, fucking yeah. honking the horn, giving her the finger shit. Then you pull next to her, like, like some sweet old lady, and you're like, fuck. 
fuck. I know, but what is she doing in the left lane, though? Like, she don't even, know. She's got to know. Yeah, she doesn't even know. She doesn't even know where she's going. Yeah. Yeah. So when we're so when we're old, like it's gonna be. No, nah, an old guy you could flip off. You could fucking yeah. cut him off. And well, I'm just saying that old lady probably, probably that old lady probably passed her exit like 15 minutes ago. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah has no idea. <laughs> she has no clue. Well, it wasn't even that. You should have known by the Buick. You should have known by the Buick. It was a Regal. It was a Mercedes. It was, it was like, an, like a Mercedes SL or something like that. I'm driving an down. SL. Some, Ooh, legit. She's yeah, a I'm rich old down, lady. Yeah. I'm <laughs> in Smithtown Mama. going Sugar to um, going to Monster, and I'm like five minutes late, and I'm like, fuck, I got to get there. And she's driving right next to everybody in the fucking right lane, and I finally get up and pass her, and I'm like. Did she have the fuck. big, uh, like, blind old lady goggles on? She had the glasses. Yeah. The, oh, the blue blockers. The blue blockers. God. Yeah. They're like the fucking whole, she's science like up class on the goggles. Seat, like yeah. all the way up towards the thing. I, uh, it pissed me off so bad that I couldn't even be mad. I, I hate anymore. when you put the high beams on, dude, and they do the old, the old uh, rear view mirror trick. They just like hit that little like tab dude, on the knee. She probably didn't even and realize I put the fucking high beams on. No, I had a uh, Friday. I was driving up. She had her to, blue blockers um, on. To she Newburgh, did. and we're in some fucking podunk back road. This like single lane, windy fucking road, and it's at, it's dark out. I don't know where I am. I'm on a road that's twisting and turning, and everybody's going slow, so I'm going slow. And all of a sudden, it turns into two lanes, right? So I, I didn't realize it was going to turn into a two-lane road, so I ended up in the left lane. I was probably doing like 35. This Jeep is on my ass flashing its fucking brights at me, and I'm like, what the fuck, dude? I'm like, I've been in the left lane for three seconds. It just turned <laughs> in to a two-lane road. Fucking whips around me, honks, and gets right in front of me. Two seconds later, back to a one-lane road. And this guy's just stuck in front of me for the next, like, 15 miles, <laughs> doing zero miles an hour. And I'm just like, all right, high beam city, bro. That's it. Like, and you're stuck in front of me now. You're fucked. You're like, fucked. Yeah. And what were you driving? I was driving a Lexus truck. Oh. You know, and I'm like, dude, I, it literally became, I was in the left lane of a two-lane highway for three fucking seconds. It just turned into it. This guy's like, you're in the left lane, cocksucker. Like... All right, Dick. So he flies around me, gets in front of me, cuts me off. Boom. Right back to a one lane road. I'm oh, like, how'd that work out for you? Dick yeah, head? you fucking asshole. And dude. he was stuck in front of me for the next like 15 miles. Yeah. And I was just high beaming him, flip blinking him. I was just tormenting this dude. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've high beamed people before, dude. And they just hit the tab. And I'm like, you motherfucker. You just like you just shut down my high beam game, dude. You <laughs> motherfucker. Slick. Well, I think the Jeeps and like the pickups have a brighter fucking high beam i think i think it's just because of the height that they are that's what it is it's the height that we're at so it, it, it just, just fucking, hits different. it hits different yeah yeah my get your weight up not your hate up dude so i love i love technology i've always said man like technology is good it should assist us in our day-to-day -day life but it shouldn't take over and this technology is fucking taking over bro these kids that are coming out of school are getting stupider and stupider by the fucking generation. Oh, yeah. So I went to 7-Eleven. I got, like, some snacks during work or whatever. And I only had a $100 bill. So my, I think, like, it was, like, $9 and change. So the girl had to give me back, like, ninety fourteen. That was, like, my change out of the 100 right? So off the bat, she starts counting out singles. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck are we doing? So she starts counting out $20 in singles. Then she puts them to the side. Then she gets some tens. She gets some fives. So she's like, all right, it's a lot of money. I'm like, all right, cool. So she starts counting it out. She's like 10, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 51, 52, 53, 50, all the way to 70. She gives me fucking all that money back. And then she's like 70. Okay, nine singles, right? And I look at her. And I'm like, all right, cool. And she's just like, all right, give me that 20 back. I'll give me the singles back. Give me 20 singles back. So I'm like, all right, now mind you, there's a fucking line in 7-Eleven. There's like five people fucking behind me. <laughs> so I give her back the 20 singles. She gives me a 20. She's like, all right. And I'm like, we're still at $79. She yeah, looks where's, at me. Where's she's, the rest of the change? She's like, uh, uh, all right, just give me everything back. I'm like, no. I'm like, you owe me fucking $11. That's all you have to give me. She's like, 11? I'm like, yeah. I'm like, $11. You owe me 90, like 14. She looked at me. She's like, 11? I'm, I'm like, yeah, just give me 11 bucks and let's call it a day. She couldn't even do the fucking math, bro. Dude, I went. I was. I had the same kind of thing. I was at the at the gas station just getting a monster, and it's like three thirty six or something like that, right? I give the guy a twenty, and he's like, I give him like forty cents or something like that. He had to use a calculator to figure out how much he had to give me back. It's I'm just like, another dollar. Dude, it's dude, bad. Seven. It's I'm like it's seventeen dollars and four cents. He goes, oh okay. 
but I'll give him credit because the next time I went in there, I gave him like a five and like some things. He goes, oh, I'm going to do this in my head this time. And he actually got it right. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's amazing. Like what you said about technology, how at no other point in the universe or in the world has you have anybody had the access to everything that's ever happened so accessibly. It fits in your pocket and yet nobody knows anything. They're even dumber. And like what, what pisses me off is if you're like, if I'm reading something like, uh, in my job, like you have to create a lot of documents for procedures and stuff and you type something up and there's spelling errors all over it. I'm like, dude, it literally auto corrects yeah. it for you. It yeah. underlines it in bright red. You click it and it fixes it for yeah. you. You still couldn't figure this out. Like dude, how it, stupid are you? It's fucking ridiculous. But that's what I'm saying though, man. Like we had to think when we were younger, we actually had to use our fucking brain. These kids today have everything. They have no problem solving. Skills. They have no problem solving. And skills, they don't know any dude. history. Do you no. know, dude, I'm not going to name names, but two girls I know that are not in their thirties yet. Neither one of them knew who fought in world war two. <laughs> if you ever be having this conversation, dude, like what? I haven't been having this conversation. How do you fucking not know that? I won't say names either. <laughs> you don't yeah, know who fought in Hawaii. World War II? Oh, well. But yo, I mean, like, listen, like, I get that, like, history is not for everybody, but the fact that you can't do simple math. No, history is for everybody. Well, it's no. I mean, like, listen, when you're a kid and shit, like, you might not be in the history. I get it. But, like, if you can't do simple math, subtraction and adding and shit like that, dude, like, what the fuck? You know, like I get it. Some people just like discredit like certain classes because they'll never use it in life. I get but, like, that, but dude, like math, come on, bro. Simple addition, subtraction. It's not like we're doing fucking calculus. You're figuring out change. That's what I'm saying. It's ridiculous. Yeah, it's bad, bro. The the technology that we have today is just making people stupider and stupider. Some people just can't do math, though. Like that could I'm be, one of them. Like I know a couple people that uh, that just for whatever reason, it's just a wrap. Not even simple math. Yeah. Decent at other things, but <laughs> decent at other things. I, I'm one of them. I'm not. Math is not my strong suit. No, huh? No. Luigi's pretty good at math. I think from his job. Yeah, I got to be good at math for my job. Yeah. Just from like laying out and shit like that. Like I need to all the formulas and yeah, and, and, and different shit. measurement for pipes and yeah. what you need to fill this spot yeah. in and shit like that. You know, You're using fractions too. Fraction. Yeah. Are you really? Well, yeah, because a lot of them. Um. Like a lot of the fittings are like four and a half, four and an eighth. You got like two and seven eighths on one side. Ah, uh, see, I lose it. I lose it when they when you start doing fractions and when fucking letters equal numbers, dude. Oh, Yo. I checked out. Once I had to solve for X, I was like, Nah, dude, we just did that in English. I'm out. <laughs> I'm out. I'm out. Well, like, I got to do a lot of like the one four one and shit like that when I'm laying out because you got forty fives. You go up like you got to get around certain things. You got to make sure the pipe's gonna fit in that yeah. area. Yeah, I get it. When I was in the survey, when I was a surveyor full time, so surveyors we work on construction sites, but we don't use feet and inches. No, no. Well, you use decimals, right? All of our all of our measurements are in what's called decimal feet. So all huh. of our foot dimension is the same as everybody else's foot dimension. But instead of working with inches, we work in tenths of feet. So a foot is divided by 10, and then each tenth of foot is divided by 10 into what's hundreds. The, what's the practicality well, of that? Well, well, it allows you, instead of having to use decimals to do math, it allows you to, uh, and not frac instead of using fractions to do math, it's it allows you to do, yeah, decimals. Okay. And, but... On the actual, so that's what we're doing our calculations in when we're like putting marks out on the ground or measuring things. But when we actually have to write them out for trades to use, we mentally convert decimal feet into feet and inches with fractions. Oh, sure. So I'll add up. I can uh, it, math is one of my strong suits. So like in my head, like I can add up like multiple. Uh, no, multiple fractional numbers and then convert them into regular feet and inches or decimal feet, like whole numbers. But uh, it's, it's, it's like, it's a very, very interesting uh, antiquated archaic system that still exists. Yeah, it is crazy. But it still happens. And then oh, every once in a while we'd be on a project that would use fucking millimeters too. And that really threw that me off. That sucks. Dude, yeah. I, I thought you were going to go with that where you used millimeters. I was like, damn, dude. No, I've been on projects like that. I never got used to using centimeters and things like that. Centimeters, decimeters always threw me off. Yeah. Fucking Europeans. Yeah, I know. And then like the sockets do, you have like standard and metric and shit. I feel like their system makes so much more sense. Like, oh, multi it does. Multiple, it does. Multiples of 10. Like it's so dumb that we deviated from that. Like there should think, be a universal. You can thank drug dealers for teaching the American kids the metric system. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> How many grams are in an ounce? Yeah. Yeah, 28. Yeah, 28. Yeah. Don't yep. say nothing good comes from drugs. That is so How true. many ounces are in a pound? Yep. 16. 16. <laughs> <laughs> How many pounds are in a kilo? <laughs> 2.3. <laughs> I, didn't, I, I didn't know that one. Yeah, it's true. That's though, the reason why American kids know the metrics. If system. you're talking kilos, you're talking the good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. That is true. Do How about we, uh, this? How many grams are in a kilo, T Dog? 1,000. Oh, you got it. Damn. Damn. Terrence we, is uh, on point, damn. bro. Do we have a question of the day? No. Damn. Sean. Question of the day? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I'm not in the mood for your shit, Luigi. Damn. That sucks, dude. No, no question. <laughs> yeah, that just killed the fucking. That's all right though. We've we've done it without question of the day, so we good. We'll survive. We will survive. I will survive. Sorry. But um, I do want to weigh in on one more thing though, dude. The uh, the changing of the weather, how we get in the cold weather and all the leaves are falling. Anybody else pissed off when their neighbors blow their leaves to the curb in a huge ass pile? No, I love them. that. What's that? And they leave them? And they fucking leave them there? Damn, that's so grimy. I know, I know my aunt lives in, um, like, Center H, Lake Grove, mm -hmm. and that's what they do, but then something comes by and, like, scoops them all up. Like, you're yeah, telling they, me there's... But they the don't scoop them off your property when the wind blows them all over your front yard. Yeah, that's shot. <laughs> yeah, it's shot, dude. I mean, I guess now it kind of pisses me off, but I used to love that as a kid. We used to be able to, like, ride through them or, like, jump in them and shit. Oh, really? Yeah, we'd ride through them on a bike, oh and, like, there God. was so many. Yeah. We would, like, fucking... What about the assholes that would put, like, cinder blocks in their you, leaves? I was, just gonna want... I was just gonna say that. My friend, my buddy Brendan, his cousin, uh, is paralyzed because of that. They, this guy, they had trails. They used to ride dirt bikes behind um, behind the houses, and the guy put fucking cinder blocks and shit in the pile of leaves, and he hit him and fucking got paralyzed. What on his bike? Oh, he rode through it. Yeah. Damn. On, yeah. His, on his motor, like dirt bike. Oh shit. Oh, shit. No, yeah. that never happened over. I remember over hearing about that when I was younger. Like, don't be driving your car through piles of leaves. People put cinder blocks in them and yep. shit. Yeah, Fuck up your car. I guess that was a Suffolk thing. It's Could illegal now. It's a felony. Is it really? Yeah, yeah. You're not allowed to put anything in your leave piles like that because Holy people are getting shit. fucked up. Damn. Yeah, it's really fucked up. I'd never heard of that before, but I didn't like where I grew up. We were on a dirt road, so we didn't have like piles of leaves and shit. You Nobody blew them in the woods. Yeah, blew them in the woods. It, if you did anything at all. Well, that, that was that was it. The, but it was because these trails, I think, were behind the person's house, and I think the guy was getting mad that the leaves were blowing over the fence into his lawn. So to stop the kids from doing that, they put center blocks yeah. in the fucking piles of leaves so that when they write, they would learn their lesson and not write through them and kick leaves onto yeah. his fucking property. That's yep. really fucked up, though, because that's like promote. That's like, you're going to get injured. Yeah. yeah. Dude, he's paralyzed. Yeah, that's fucking that's fucked insane. up, dude. Yeah. yeah. It's fucked up. Well, I mean, listen, it got around, man. People now don't fucking ride through piles of leaves with their fucking car or dirt bikes. Yeah. Yeah. Bananas, dude. Yeah, that's fucked I never heard of that before. Really? No, I'm we surprised. used to do it all the time as a kid. Yeah. And then people would come out and they'd probably be like fucking halfway down the block and shit. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> shit. All right, should we wrap this up, boys? Yeah, might as well. Hey, uh, thanks for coming on, bro. No, thank you for having me. I really appreciate and, it. And thank you for letting us set up shop here and have home base. Oh, uh, anytime. I thank you for uh, promoting the wonderful uh, Kava life. Yeah, dude. Of course, man. This thing was a, a big staple for us. Life's better with Island Kava. Yeah, for sure. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's thank our sponsors today, dude. Uh, Island Kava. You guys are in the area. You want to check out some exotic teas? Come check them out. They're right in uh, the village of Patchogue. Also, a big shout out to Lalo. If you want to try the uh, the new Kava drink in a can, it's, uh, it's good. They got a ton of flavors. Big shout out to uh, Remy Fit. He's not here today, but uh, you want to do some personal training and get your ass in shape, go check him out at... Uh, Remy Fit on Instagram. Uh, Total Motion 360 is another sponsor of ours. They, uh, they came out with a nice, new, innovative home product. So if you're tired of going to the gym and doing your normal bullshit as far as bench press and everything else, <laughs> you, could, uh, you could change it up, dude. They, uh, they incorporate some traditional uh, training functions and some other stuff. So check them out. And uh, check us out on Spotify, Pandora. Hit us up on Instagram with some questions of the day. Also, check us out at uh, Flex Fights next weekend. Yeah, we'll be there. Flex Fights. They're over in uh, St. James. Team Stock. Yeah, and we got uh, we got hats. So you, you guys want hat, some hats? Maybe a rash guard. Yeah, check us out. All right, yo, thanks for listening. Peace. Ta-ta. Adios.